This time we're going to look at a piece of software called Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to take you through the steps required in creating this graphic. So we're familiar with the with the section through the through the pavilion now and we're going to use that as the material for this particular scene. So I'm going to just going to show you the uh, the constituent parts before we get going. So there's quite a number of, of layers here but this gives us a lot of control over the image which bits we want to enhance which bits we want to weaken show, hide whatever. Okay so what we'll do is we'll uh, I'll just scrap this and we're going to start from scratch. So we'll firstly open the uh, a, a plot, a PDF plot from AutoCAD. So file, open and if you look for the file called section for Photoshop PDF and open uh, there's quite a few choices of how a PDF will be treated when it comes into Photoshop. Different ways of of cutting the image down initially. Media Box gives you the size of plot including the paper size. Bounding Box gives you just the contents. So I'd like you to go for Media Box for this one. It's quite high resolution so you can see we've got a pretty big image to start off with which is good we need some crispness here. Now I could make that higher but 300 is ok for this example. Click OK. OK can you see what it's done it's just it's extracted the the line work from the file and it's basically floating it, floated it. So the checker, checkerboard pattern you see is basically transparent there's nothing there all we've got here in this image are the lines that were generated from from Photoshop. Okay, I've got my standard tools down this side and I'm using the magnifying glass, that's the default tool. Okay, a left click takes you in. If you hold the Alt key and click, you can zoom out. Click and drag zooms in and out the middle mouse button adjusts the the sliders as you can see okay so I'm going to roll the mouse backwards so I can zoom out okay I don't have much space here on the the screen for the because of the screen capture software but we'll uh, endeavor to uh, to work with it so firstly we're going to deal with these edges that are hanging over so we're going to crop the image. Okay, so click the crop tool. This has got various methods of being able to use. At the moment, I'm in width times height times resolution. Okay, the default is called ratio. Okay, but I'd like you to go for width, height, resolution. This gives you probably the most flexibility. Okay, when I drag, it feels like it clicks on the ends of the line here and that's because I've got snap active. If you go to view and you'll see a tick against snap and at the moment it's snapping to everything. Okay it's generally fairly useful sometimes we switch that off if it causes us a bit of annoyance. Okay so I've, I've adjusted the side, this side, do the same with this side, take it to the end of the line Okay, I'm going to leave plenty of height. I want plenty of space for trees and background. Okay, so when you're happy with the with the crop, you press enter, and the crop in Photoshop is extremely useful. You can also you can also rotate an image. So if you need to straighten something up, it's extremely easy to do. Okay, look for the small target in the middle that tells you when you're centered on the object okay so if I if I wanted to get that centered a bit better I'm just going to move that in just slightly okay as I say when you're happy just press the enter key a couple of times there and it fixed it 
Okay, so this is our lines layer. So let's rename this. If you if you can't see the layers tab, go to window layers. Okay, we're going to rename this layer, so we double click here fairly slowly. Okay, and I'm going to call this line work. I'll use capitals because it's quite small. Okay. I want the layer in behind that. So I'm going to create a new layer. Okay, and then I can reorganize this layer and move it below the line work. Okay, let's rename this one to background. Okay, it's pretty difficult to see what's going on with this checkerboard pattern. So what we'll do is pour white paint into the background. I definitely want white. Okay, so this little icon here forces black and white. So you click that. So I've got black here in my foreground, white in the background. I need white in the foreground. So that's what this little arrow does. It flips these two over. Okay, I'm going to use the paint bucket tool. If you can't see the paint bucket tool, sometimes it's underneath the gradient tool. Okay, so you click and hold on an icon and it allows you to swap to a different tool. Okay, so I'm going to add the paint on the background layer. So I activate the background layer and then just click inside, anywhere inside the image. And we've got a bit more clarity now. We can see what's going on. Okay, down here, I'd like to, to fill this area with black paint instead. So that's on the line work layer, that area. I want black instead of white, so flip the colors. And then using the paint bucket tool again, I click in that space. Now I'm going to zoom in closer. I just want to show you. Notice here around the edge, it hasn't quite filled it in with the black. It's, it's stayed off the edge of the line. And this is because the line work had a slightly softened edge and you get that in Photoshop. It's called anti-aliasing. So if I want to get rid of that, which would show up on a print, I just add the ink again. Okay, it's just forced it through the anti-aliasing to the very edge. Okay, now we're going to need to, to, to chop, to use a shape to chop away lots of other layers. So what we'll do is we'll make a selection that we can call back at any point. And making selections in Photoshop is really the key to operating the software. Okay, so I'm going to hide the layers panel just now so I get a bit more space on screen. And I'm going to zoom in close to here. Okay, so what we're going to use is what's called the polygonal lasso. Now, usually when you first start the software, you'll see the, the, the freehand lasso. This is very difficult to control. We want to use the polygonal lasso. So click and hold and you'll see polygonal lasso. Okay, I'm not a big fan of these kind of magic wand type automatic selections. They tend to cause more trouble than they're worth. So polygonal lasso, I'm going to make my first selection just about here because I'm going to run this way along this line. So I'm going to select just about here. Okay, and then the polygonal lasso wants to go this way. If I hold the shift key, it forces it in a straight line. If I go to the edge of the viewable space, it starts to scroll. Okay, so I just let it scroll across. Okay, till I get to this point. And then we do the same downwards. We just nudge, nudge our way down, and we're selecting around the shape. Okay, when I get to here, I'm going to let go of shift. Okay, and we're just looking for every change of direction. Okay, hold shift. You can come off the page. See, that makes so you definitely get outside the edge of the image. 
Okay, I've still got shift held. Come back on. Okay, get to here. Let go of shift. Okay, we're not far to go now. We're going upwards now, back up to where we started. And when I get close to where I started, can you see a little circle appears next to the next to the cursor? That means it will close the selection. You can also get to a certain point and double click. So that's me created a, se a, se a selection. I want to zoom out now. Get my magnifying glass. Hold Alt. And can you see the shape I've got? Okay, this is called marching ants. Okay, now that selection is going to be useful lots of times later on. So we want to store that inside the file. So if I go to Select and Save Selection, I can embed this selection inside the file in what's called a channel. So let's call this a mask and OK. OK, so that's been embedded inside the channels area of the software. OK, you can see the, the combined red, green and blue channel, then individual red, green and blue, and then our mask. OK, let's practice bringing the mask back and using it. If you do select, deselect, I've got nothing selected at the moment. Click the channel named mask. I can then load the channel as my selection. So I can reuse that shape whenever I want. I click on RGB, go back to the layers tab, and I can carry on my work. My work. Okay, so let's leave that, put that to one side. Okay, so do select and deselect. And we'll start looking firstly in this area, adding some graphic layers to the to the drawing. Okay, so I want to firstly putting a strip of grey at the back here, and this is kind of like we call this tanking. It's kind of the waterproofing around the edge of the pool. So I click new layer and get into a habit of naming your layers straight away. Otherwise things can get a bit chaotic. Okay. I'm going to hide the layers just now because I'm a bit short of space. Okay. I'm going to create a selection, but this time using the marquee tool. So this will give me a rectangular selection. So I'm going to start the selection just about here. Okay. Create a rectangle that covers all the area that needs the tanking. Keep dragging. Okay. If I was worried about this area, I could do a little s cut out from that. If I hold the Alt key, a minus appears next to my cursor, and I can do a small selection that takes away that corner. Scroll back, hold Alt, take the selection out. So it's a adding selections is with the Shift key, taking away selections is with the Alt key. Okay, now I want some colour to put in here, so I just want a shade of grey. So I'm going to click on the foreground colour, and I'm looking for a shade of grey round about here at about 52. So I'm just right at the edge, and I've got my 52, 52, 52. When these three numbers are all the same, you've either got black, grey, or white. Click OK. Use our paint bucket again drop the colour into that area. Don't worry that you're obscuring line detail. We're going to bring that back right at the end. OK, so colour in, done there. Do select, deselect. OK, let's turn the tanking layer off so we can see what we're doing next and create another layer. This one's going to be called the Statue Plinth. 
Okay, let's get close up. It's another fairly simple shape, just a rectangle. So we may as well use the marquee tool again. So the statue plinth is this shape. I'm trying to keep my selections in the middle of those dark, thick lines. Okay, I want a different colour for the statue plinth. It's a slightly lighter grey. So we just creep up this side, and let's go to 79. Okay, use the paint bucket tool, drop that into the plinth layer. Okay, now if you see what happens if I bring the tanking back on, it looks like the plinth is in front of the tanking. Okay, switch them both off just now, and do select, deselect. Always get into the habit of deselecting. Okay, let's deal with the marble in the background now. There's a, this is more, this is trickier. Okay, let's just hide the panel. And what we'll do is we'll start with this panel here. So we want to go to, we're going to bring in the picture of the marble from outside. So it's File, Open. I've got Single Green Marble Panel and Open. I want to copy everything here. So it's Control A, then copy, Control C. I can close that file and in the new file do Control V. So the object comes in and it automatically creates a new layer for itself. Let's just leave it called layer one just now. Once we've got all the pieces of marble, we'll join them together and rename it. Okay, let's try and move this first. So I'm going to move it and try and position this bottom corner where I want it. Okay, so I've put it out of position and then I'm using the cursor keys to nudge by one pixel at a time. So I'm overlapping the lines that are there. Okay. And now what I'll do is edit transform scale. If I hold the shift key and drag this corner we should get a good fit. Okay. Don't take it too far. You can use the zoom key while you're scaling. So hold shift and zoom in. Hold shift and roll your mouse. Okay. We can make the layer semi-transparent while we're scaling it. This helps us see where we're trying to get to. Okay, come back to the corner, hold shift. My mistake, held the wrong button there. <laughs> You can do Control Z at any point to undo. So it's Hold Shift, not Alt. <laughs> okay, and drag that down till it's covering the line. That's not looking bad. Okay, I could maybe do with pushing it upwards, just one pixel. That's a better fit. Okay. When you're happy with the scaling, it should be around about the 47% mark. Click the tick to accept that. Okay, let's put the opacity back up. Okay, because we're going to duplicate the layer and then join them together. So to duplicate the layer, all you do is drag the layer onto the new layer icon. Okay, so there's two layers in exactly the same space now. Do edit transform flip vertical get your move tool hold shift and click and drag so that that object slides and you can you see the pink guidelines and they feel the snapping it's very very definite it's a good good way of working Okay, copy the original layer again because it's facing the right way. Duplicate that layer, hold shift, drag the layer down, and we snap into position again. Great, we've got three all looking 
and working perfectly. We can now join these three together if we wanted to. Okay, so click the top one and do Control E, Control E. So we've placed three bits together into the one layer. Okay, and then we do the same job but sideways. Okay, so you click and drag to create a new layer, edit, transform, this time flip horizontal. Hold shift and drag the layers to the side. It looks like we've got a little bit of white space here. Okay, so we're slightly out size wise. Let's see what happens in the middle here. Can we nudge just a millimeter or so? Get the move tool. Yeah, we're able to go one. That's better. We're back on to the black line. Okay. We could join those two together. Control. Well, actually, don't, because you'll be left with a with a half. Let's just let's just duplicate them and move them layer at a time. So I've duplicated. Now I get the move tool. Hold shift. And drag that through. Let's see where we are in relation to this line. We're ending up slightly out. Can we go another pixel? Yep. It's just giving us this one extra pixel each time. Okay. Copy this layer now. You move tool. Shift and drag. So we're keeping this kaleidoscopic pattern working. We're back online now. Okay. And then let's just check which one we need to copy. This one. Okay. Drag that onto the new layer icon. Move. I've ran out of screen space there. Let's just hide that. And hopefully we don't see any white gap at the edge. Not bad. Okay. Okay, let's call the layers back up. And we just really now need to join these together. So we seem to... Have I got this right? We seem to have more marble than expected. It looks okay, so what we'll do is just fuse all these together. So I'm going to select all the layers there. I think I must have dragged a few by accident there. Right click, merge those layers. So all the marble is just one big piece now. And I can rename that to Marble Green. Okay, so it's starting to starting to shape up. Now what I'll do is we'll add the water and then we'll have a break in the video because I don't want to take them over the kind of half hour kind of threshold. Okay, so another new layer and we'll call this water. And we're going to use a blue colour for this. So let's get our colour ready to use. Okay, and the colour is by RGB components is 6, 69, 91. Okay, quite a strong teal type blue. The water is going to go between this line and the solid there. So use your rectangular marquee might get an even closer so we get a good accurate selection okay click and drag come right across to create the water component okay I can zoom out now I've got my selection made I can zoom out happily use the paint bucket tool pour the water in Select, deselect. Okay, 
and the water layer wants to be just 30% visible. So I have a transparency slider, but if you want to be more accurate, you can type over the number there and then press enter. Okay, let's see what it looks like with the other layers. So we're, st we're starting to build things up now. We've got the water in front of the plinth, which is, and they're all in front of the tanking with the marble above. So that gives us a, a good, a convenient place to uh, stop the first part of the of the video.